Now we come to a segment we like to call It's Barely News. Uh, little stories that we're going to just tell you about because we think they're interesting, but not like really newsworthy. Uh, yeah. And we will start with a quintocopter. A quintocopter? What is a quint? quint. Is that? Quintcopter. Five, five copter. Five right? copter. Is that yeah. a pentacopter? Or a pentacopter, sure. Yeah. Oh, all right. I've heard of a pentacopter. However you, however you want to say it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we got this, uh, this speeder drone here, and it's actually two-channel control, which is pretty neat. That's sort of the entire design behind this, uh, or idea behind this design. Um, is essentially he wanted an FPV drone, but he wanted it to be flyable with a two-channel RC car radio by somebody who didn't know how to fly uh, FPV, uh, just for like a fun flight experience. Um, and so that's what he did. He basically... Um, went through a bunch of design iterations to build uh, what is essentially a little a little craft that kind of scoots across the top of the ground at a fixed distance based on a sensor. Right. And then uh, has a thruster in the back so you can, uh, yeah, just do two-position control. So pretty cool. This feels like something that Chad Capper would have made because Chad Capper was always trying to find ways to get people into FPV and make it more accessible. And yet at the same time, it sometimes felt like he didn't grasp what FPV pilots actually wanted, which I think he would say, yeah, I grasp what normal people want. And this feels yeah, like goal, that. <laughs> my understanding, the goal of this project was literally to have, yeah, like a child, you know, be able to fly this like they would drive an RC car around their yard, right? You pick up the pistol controller, you squeeze the trigger and you turn the knob. And once you learn, you can fly it around or drive it around. That, that was sort of yeah. the idea. That's kind of cool. So like, these are the original. This is the original design. This was the turtle, and then he slowly modified it to get farther and farther along, and uh, and yeah, eventually got to the point where he's got his new uh, the Edra Works speeder. So, like RC cars have all kinds of problems when used, especially on rough terrain, and you're trying to go fast. Um, right. I mean, this also probably has its own set of of problems, but this solves that problem in a really interesting way. And I think there's something to be said. Here's the thing. There's something to be said for auto racing, for wheeled racing in two dimensions, right? It's fun in its own way. It's different than drone racing. There's, if that's true, then there's something to be said for drone racing with a two axis drone that sort of has air, some aerodynamic, but also some car, wheel based physics. It's very interesting. I That's could definitely see spec races with these or something. That would be pretty neat. Yeah. Very cool. I'm looking further in the video. Oh, here, let's watch this. He's got a, he's got a clip of the big one flying. Even got these air, air wings on it to help it track. I guess that's really slick. Yeah, sort of keep it in like a more of a line and let it follow better with the. Right. Wow. That's, honestly. Uh, that's really, I'm, I find this really appealing. If you could do this kind of racing and all you had to think about was a trigger and a wheel. I mean, I could fly this with my drone, but it's just a different way of thinking about the Definitely much the less mental load on the, on the flying part. Definitely. Yeah. Like you're not maintaining elevation and yeah, definitely pretty neat. That's really something. Yeah. That's really cool. It's a different way of thinking about it. You know, where's your turn in? Where's your apex? And you're not with all the sticks. Huh. That's that's cool. I I went into this thinking it was going to be dumb and he converted me. I'm convinced. <laughs> it's really slick. Does he sell this or do you have to build your own? Uh, he is working on designing uh, like a, basically a full carbon fiber frame and TP set around it. Uh, if you, the second link is his website on Google. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, he's got a link at the very bottom that takes you to his log of the latest stuff he's been doing. Hmm. So that's all uh, speeder updates, I think, on the top right there, actually. It's not for sale, though. It will. I think it will. I think it will be at some point, but uh, or he'll, he'll at least publish all the stuff. Okay. Uh, so eventually, done. like Emacs will make one and not give him credit. <laughs> Something I mean, like fair that. enough. Probably. <laughs> That's really slick. That's really slick. Somebody needs to make this. This could sell. Uh, this could sell. I would review this if somebody made it. 
I mean, I, I don't know if I would take the time to build my own. Uh, I might, I might buy one for two hundred dollars though. Very slick. Would this need? Would this Blunty? Does this need remote ID? Is this an aircraft or a ground vehicle? It's definitely an aircraft. But it has a it has a, a distance sensor. It won't go. It's an air. It's an aircraft. There's no chance it's not an aircraft. It's not okay. tethered. What if? What if I got some wheels on like little springs so that the whole time it was touching the ground, even though it was flying? Would, I think that would not be a drone. <laughs> would that need remote ID if no. it was touching the ground the whole time? I don't think so. No, it's no I longer think, technically. I literally it's no... think the distinction is flying versus not flying. Yeah, like if you okay. if you if you have that drone and you hold a string and it flies around your entire house and it's on that string, my understanding is that is not a drone. Okay, okay. So you're saying if I had wheels, even if the wheels were not carrying any weight, if they they have to be touching the ground. So the wheels are touching the ground, but the but the props are still providing all the lift. The wheels are simply resting and rolling along the ground. That's no imagine, longer an aircraft. For I would the imagine FAA. that would no longer be an aircraft. Yeah. Okay. What if, if it I falls? It's like caught on the wheels, and like I imagine there's some kind of BS to do with that. But what if I just take a string and I drag it on the ground with no wheel? No, I don't think that works. <laughs> what if I take a string with a ball on the so end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Where's the line? FAA. The FAA will tell you when they when they cite you. There are specific tether <laughs> rules for UAS, so it might be more descriptive. Okay. okay. All right. Well, that's really cool. Um, uh, next up, we've got pineapple pie in the sky. What does that mean? Uh, so this is a uh, drone breach attack that we wanted to bring to your or I wanted to bring to your attention. I thought it was kind of neat in a little Twitter thread here um, by a... Um, a guy who does a lot of this drone uh, drone stuff. So essentially, um, the details of this are that um, they had a private investment company who had a hack on their network, like their Wi-Fi network. And their Wi-Fi network was logging in um, information. Uh, and it seemed like somehow they were getting like a local hack, but they couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. So they deployed Wi-Fi signal tracing in a fluke system and were able to identify on a rooftop two drones they were located on a rooftop. One was a uh, DJI Matrice 600 and one was a DJI Phantom. And the Phantom was carrying a Wi-Fi pineapple device, which is essentially a Raspberry Pi, um, or sorry, uh, which is essentially like a uh, Wi-Fi like scanner sniffer thing. And then the Matrice was carrying a Raspberry Pi, um, a little laptop on it, a 4G modem, and another Wi-Fi device. Um, and essentially, they determined that uh, they were using both drones in series to scan, sniff, detect, and uh, attack the network and spoof pages on the network locally with drones. Wow. And they think that it costs around $15,000 for this one-time attack, um, but they think that it was worth it depending on the company, obviously. It was an investment company, I believe. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting what's happening with drones. This is, they said this is not the first time they've seen this. Um uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to see. Wow. That's really slick. I'm just keeping reading it. Um, yeah. So the main way that the drone is being used here is simply to get the Wi-Fi hacking equipment close to the Wi-Fi network that they're trying to hack and gain access to it. Um, as yeah. usual, the drone itself is not the threat. The drone, the, the, the package that the drone carries is the threat and the drone's maneuverability and flexibility and low cost uh, yeah. is, is well, what I makes think, it valuable. I think part of the question is how hard would it be to get someone on a rooftop in that location to do that scanning, sniffing and get the laptop and the four, you know, there's all these pieces that have to be there. And yeah. So that you could just fly a drone that looks like a normal Phantom that people are taking pictures with and fly mm -hmm. right on that rooftop and get similar or the same data. As and long in as... their mind, I imagine it was like, hey, we spent 15 grand and left stuff up there. Who cares if we get, right. you know, uh, you know, however much money in these spoof transactions or whatever they're getting. Yeah, right? yeah absolutely. I mean, you just wait till the guy's not at home and you land the drone on his roof. Nobody thinks twice about it. Uh, and then you just leave it there and nobody notices it. Uh, and, and you yeah. do what you got to do. If you were to try to do that with a human, you would need a person to go near the property. You would need to stash the equipment somewhere on the ground 
which was, makes it more likely to be discovered and makes it less effective as a, a Wi-Fi device on the roof might can see much further than a Wi-Fi device on the ground outside the perimeter. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Pretty interesting. Very interesting. So, yeah. Can you imagine how surprising it was to them to like, this page is spoofed, what's happening? And then they found the result of that was two drones on a roof. One of them was making the fake page. Like, yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty wild. That feels yeah. like some uh, movie stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, they so, got a free Matrice out of it. So that's a plus. It's very true. Very true. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm keeping that Matrice. I think that's fair. Right. Yeah. Once it's out of evidence or whatever, if the police got involved, I feel like that's my Matrice now. Um, all righty. Uh, oh, we missed one. I'm sorry, Blunty. I I see why you sounded a little off because I skipped one. Apologize. Okay, Let's go no, back. No big deal. I always do that. Next, next up, we've got the uh, f we got a flying angle grinder. Uh, our favorite Peter Schreepel is back. I love Peter Schreepel. <laughs> Absolutely. And in this one, he has decided to try to figure out how to make an angle grinder fly. And this is like, this is it's barely news because it's very. It's barely drone related, but I thought it was pretty cool. He does a lot of cool drone stuff. So uh, it's a neat project if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And his goal is, uh, you know, he found a lot of different things for angle grinders online and they all seem pretty crazy, but yeah, he just wanted to see if he could get a, uh, use it as a flight, a flight motor. And uh, I'm not going to show the payoff. I don't want to ruin his video. Of course, he's already got 1.1 million views. So what are we going to do to hurt his success? All right, I'll show it. Uh, he got it, He put it on a plane. He got it to fly. There was a lot of engineering that went into the RPM of the motor and the, the biggest prop and the most thrust that the motor could produce. Um, it's, it's really interesting engineering. Uh, when you've got a five inch drone, there's a ton of data about the size of motor and the size of prop that works best. But in a case like this, there just wasn't any data. And, and he had some very clever ways of figuring out how much thrust the motor was making uh, and ended up putting it on a uh, plane and flew it around and it succeeded. You know, I don't, Lindsay, I don't think you made reference to this, but I, I can't, I, when I saw this video, I was like, does anybody remember when David Windestall made the Dremel drone for Rotor Riot? 265k views. Peter Schrippel's got 1.1 million. Damn it. It was pretty cool. And you should check that out if you're interested. David Winchester made a Dremel drone. It's literally out of Dremel tools. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Did he put yeah. Did he put brushless motors in there though? Did he fake it? I can't remember if he used the original Dremel motors. I think he did. Yeah, no, he did because he had to get a special brushed ESC. This is the original Dremel motors. He did pull the battery, though, and use a... Anyway, uh, it was a lot of work. Oh, I was in that episode. We did get it to fly, and it, it we got like three or four flights before it burned itself up and died. So, <laughs> um, anyway. All righty. Uh, what else? Next up, um, we go from big drones committing crimes to small drones committing crimes. We've got a DJI Mini. Uh, that was able to enable a $147,000 uh, ATM theft uh, with, with a mini. So, uh, Why did the ATM have $147,000 in it? That seems excessive. Yeah, somebody did not do the drop when they were supposed to, or that is like <laughs> a crazy busy ATM or something. I, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, the, basically they got into the room with an in, through an air vent, um, and he used that uh, Mavic Mini uh, that pushed a button to a technical room next to the ATM. <laughs> That's fantastic. There's a door, a locked door, and inside there's a button that unlocks the door because, like, you can't lock people in. And they just flew a drone and pushed the button. Oh, they got into the cash drop room. That's what happened. So the oh, room I next see. to the ATM was the cash drop room, and they were able to steal a cash box. Um, or maybe that was in the ATM, but either way, they were able to get uh, get in there. And they also had a secret code that only the couriers knew. So oh. obviously, this was some kind of planned yeah. deal. Uh, they used a really telescopic something. pole equipped with a mirror to locate the button first and then use the drone to push it. Uh, the good news is that the two men connected with the heist have been arrested. Good news. Criminals must always be arrested and punished. All right. I wondered what you'd well, say. Well, they got him. <laughs> Thank goodness they got those dastardly people. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, we got one more. Two more. Two more. Next up. Zipline expands to deliver medicines in Utah. You might know Zipline because Zipline has been delivering uh, for Walmart, doing those fly-by drops uh, for their delivery stuff. And now um, they have Salt Lake City or Salt Lake Area coverage um, in Utah for uh, deliveries for medicines. So it seems like, you know, this is probably going to be where a lot of this stuff ends up. We've talked before about like how these drone deliveries are last mile, last few miles, and a lot of them are propped up by investor money, and a lot of them are pretty cheap, and it's hard to know like where where the profit's going to be, like how much of this is going to be profitable and not in the future. Mm -hmm. How long will these last? But I feel like medicine is probably one that we're going to see for a while, especially with fixed wing delivery like Zipline is doing. It's probably a lot cheaper, um, and you get a lot more range on it. So I would expect us to see emergency medicine delivery stuff to continue to happen by drone. I. I I think that um, if I had one criticism of this, it would be that the company's name is incredibly misleading because when I read the headline as we were prepping for the show, I assumed that they were delivering medicine by Zipline, and I thought, how is this drone related? This is the second time this <laughs> happened. The other time we had the Zipline story, the same thing happened. <laughs> I, and you'd think I would remember, but but no. I yeah. think if you have a drone-related delivery company, calling it Zipline is a very bad idea. Everyone will assume you're. It's like, it's like, well, what's your company? Uh, my company's name is Zipline. Oh, so you do ziplines? No, God damn it! Why do people keep asking me that? <laughs> it's like, well, you named the company Zipline. We do drones. I get, I, I get that understanding. I get that <laughs> as well. But uh... okay. <laughs> all right, we got one more. Uh, hang on yeah, one second. I have to hide somebody from the channel because it's a spammer. Um, let's see if the third time I remember. Uh, this is a Halloween lights display involving drones. Yes. Involving drones. Uh, so this guy has been doing Halloween lights every year, um, and has had better and better displays. And this year, uh, he added whoa. a drone light show. To whoa, his whoa, 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 whoa. That's a drone light show. Oh my God. It's a drone light show filmed by who, a drone. Who is this guy? Nobody. I don't know. Uh, some guy uh, on YouTube as people are. Um, he uh, goes under the name Magical Light Shows. Uh, this is kind of a thing they do now, which is do light shows. What but I think the they also fuck? do installations of these if you want to do like, uh, if you want a light show at your place. So. I want a light show at my place. Hell yeah. Wow. I mean, it would be a business expense. I could make a video about it. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. Wow. I'm not playing sure. any of the music because I'm sure it's copyrighted music. So. It is the Ghostbusters theme, so it's very there copyrighted. There is a link in the video description if you want to check this out. I got to get a hold of this guy. That's insane. We make light shows that will premiere installation, theme parks, buildings, drive throughs We've done it all. Home sequences. Oh, my goodness, yes. That's a crazy... Wow, that's crazy. Do you, does he, did they just stay at your house all season? This has to be a one time thing. This is insane. What the, what the hell? That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Something Pretty about seeing it done over somebody's house hits different. You yeah, see that's it done? how this ended up. That's how this ended up here. If this was a normal light show, we probably wouldn't have showed it. But I thought this was a pretty neat show over a dude's house, and uh, I don't know who would do this. But if you're, if you want to beat your neighbors this Christmas, uh, you could do that with a drone light show. Yeah, my God, that's really something. That's really something. I gotta find right. a way to make a video out of this. <laughs> All right. All right, well, that's um, the last the last bit of news we've got for today. Oh, uh, man, we made show. it to 7 o'clock after all. Looks like uh, we can just stretch anything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All righty.